This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio. Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob Vicano. Welcome back, everyone, and to all our Canadian listeners, a very happy Canada Day. Tomorrow, July 1st, is Canada's 150th birthday, and to our good friends and neighbors to the south, happy Independence Day. Exonation, my guest this hour is Maureen J. St. Germain, and uh, Maureen has a lifelong interest in the Akashic Records uh, that resulted her in being granted access to this dimension that has been off-limits to most of humanity for millions of years. Founder of Akashic Records International, she is an extremely an accurate Akashic Records guide and instructor. Now, uh, widely known for her Amazon.com best-selling Beyond the Flower of Life, <clears throat> excuse me, she has been sharing knowledge and uh, she has gained from years of teaching meditation and research on the ancient truths labeled a modern-day mystic and famous Wisconsin mystics. Maureen has taught in 15 countries throughout Europe, Canada, the USA, Egypt, China, and Japan. Her books have been translated into Russian, Italian, and Chinese. And her website is MaureenStGermain.com. And Maureen, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Maureen, what exactly are the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records are a storehouse of data around each person, Mm -hmm. each event, your potential events, and your past events. So the minute you start thinking about something, there's a record that starts to happen. Just like when you're in your computer, Mm -hmm. you start to type a letter and you decide not to save it. It's still there until you exit out of it. So um, potential events are also in the records because there's multiple versions of the reality that, you know, when people start to think about something they wish they had done, Mm -hmm. they regret a decision or something like that, that shows up in the records as well. So how are you given unprecedented unprecedented access to these records? Well, you know, this is a mystery to me as well. What happened, though, is I was given a message uh, in a dream, uh, a lucid dream, that a certain astrologer had a message for me, and it was an astrologer in the town I was at. It was in Atlanta that day. Mm -hmm. And I called this woman, and... She wasn't uh, up, so her husband gave her the message, and the next day she called me back, and I said, so you're supposed to update my astrology chart, and she said, no. I have to tell you, though, I don't do messages. I don't give people this kind of information, so I was very uncomfortable that you even made this phone call and, and said that I had a message for you. So I asked my guides, and they said, we have a message for her, and don't update her charts. nothing to do with her astrology chart. And the message was, you were being given access to a dimension that has been close to humanity for millions of years. So I asked, well, why didn't my guides give me that information directly? And the answer was that I wouldn't have believed it, that I would have discounted it. Because, you know, there's lots of frauds out there. There's lots of people who, um, you know, say they're one thing sure. and don't produce. Mm-hmm. And I've always been extra careful about that. And so I think for my benefit, they gave the message to another person so that I would be more likely to accept it. How many years ago was this? 
uh, about, see, I think it was in 2000, no, 2002, so 15 years ago. Where are the Akashic Records? They're dimensionally in the 11th dimension, and I see the dimensions as nested, like Russian dolls. So technically, a person could vibrationally shift. Most people couldn't shift to the 11th dimension, so it's really like a portal that gets connected to us here, or a stargate, if you will, that allows us to access right into the 11th dimension. Hmm. You and I would not necessarily be able to change our vibration to that. When we go to sleep, we're in 6th dimension. Um, when we're in meditation and we block out, you know, like you completely go blank, and then when the meditation is over, you wake up and you think to yourself, darn, I missed the whole thing. No, that's when your um, physical body has kind of shut everything down, and you've gone with your consciousness to the eighth dimension. So very often people are very happy to learn that when they're in meditation, if they, even if they go blank, completely blank, they're still in a higher state. Because if they wake up, when the meditation is over, that's the signal. And I like to make it like a joke, you know, like your body elemental, all the systems, you know, your, your system that's running uh, your whole body, mm -hmm. say, okay, everybody, go for coffee. When she's done with that meditation, we'll let you know, and everybody can go back to their stations at that point kind of funny when you look at it that way. All right, stand by. We've got to take our first commercial break. Exxon Nation, Maureen St. Germain is our special guest. www.maureenstgermain.com That's stgermain.com And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon talking about the Akashic Records and much more. Here in the Exxon, this hour from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Exonation Maureen St. Germain is our special guest. Her website is maureenstgermain.com, and she has a lifelong interest in the Akashic Records that resulted her in being granted access to this dimension that has been off-limits to most of humanity for millions of years. She's the founder of Akashic Records International. She is an extremely accurate Akashic Records guide and instructor. Once again, her website is maureenstgermain.com. All right, before we went to the uh, commercial break with the news, you were starting to tell us about something that happened with your son, and please tell us that story. Okay, so my 16-year-old comes in and um, throws his book bag on the floor, mm -hmm. puts something in the book bag, walks into the kitchen, tells me this big story, and then says, here, Mom, I'll show you what I mean. And he goes back to his book bag, reaches in, and whatever it was he had just put in was not there. And he gets this wild look on his face, and he says, Mom, I just put it there. And I said, I know. I saw you do it. I saw you do it. And without thinking, because I was home mm -hmm. with my own son, I said, oh, honey, it's probably in the higher dimensions. We'll just ask for it to come back. Come back in the kitchen, finish your story, and then we'll see what, what happens. 
So he finished his story. He went back, and there it was. And that's when I knew I wasn't making it up. Because it's one thing to think it for yourself and ask, well, what's happening, what's going on, and be told. And it's entirely another to, to just, like, deliver it outside of yourself and have, have the proof right in front of you. So that's how come I knew it was real. And every audience I asked this question, you know, if you had stuff disappear or drop out, maybe you've had it happen, Rob. That's what's going on. And you can get it back really fast by simply saying, if it's in a higher dimension, I'd like it back. Thank you very much. And we also calm down the minute we say that. So it changes our energy. That's happened to me, but, you know, I put it up to, well, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. And, you know, I, I, I don't put a lot of faith in in certain things unless it can be proven to me. Like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a realist. Mhm. So uh, I understand. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty close. I'm I'm your second cousin. Maybe I tend to be a little bit doubtful myself because I don't want to be telling people things that you can't substantiate. Mm-hmm. So here's the test. You know, the next time that happens, ask right away. All right, Maureen Saint Germain says, just ask for it to come back. If it's in a higher dimension, I'd like it back. Thank you very much. And walk away. You know, do one thing different, and then come back, and it'll be there. And then you'll know for sure. But how does it get back there? It doesn't. You changed vibration. But if I change, you know, think of, but if think I change, like, wait a second. If right? I changed, if I changed vibration, in the respect that, let's say, this flashlight I put down on the counter in my kitchen is no longer there, wouldn't there also be other changes within that vibrational shift that I could identify? I don't know the answer. I think that you might be right, but here's the deal. What I do know is that if you put something down, you look, you, you know, 3D and 5D look so much alike that when the only difference is you, not the stuff. Because originally I thought my stuff was moving. Mm-hmm. I thought my stuff was going in the fourth or the fifth dimension. And that's not what was happening. What was happening is, Maureen, you were in the higher dimension when you put it down. And that's why you can't see it. So it's there, but I can't see it. I can't touch it. Because, you know, it's like what, what they show us in the movies where people, they can't touch something because they don't have the capacity to touch it. You know, like a ghost can't pick up something physical so what i know is that in 5d if you set something down when you were energetically at a 5d place a place of deep love and compassion what happens is when you slide back to third it's not likely to be visible to you so it might still be there but you just can't see it so it doesn't exist for you so who's who's all vibrational match anymore so who is altering the molecular surrounding and the molecular reality is it the object that i lost or is it the reality that i'm in at the time when i lost it neither i think it's the person i think it's you so in other words just like a radio can dial in different stations you're dialing to a higher vibration that is of a certain frequency that makes it possible for you to see it and when you slide back down to the other vibration, the lower vibration, you're not able to see it. So I don't think it's the stuff that's moving. I think we are. I think our energetic imprint changes it. And see, think about Russian dolls. The larger dolls can see the smaller ones, but the smaller ones can't see the larger ones. Think of those terms. Why not? Why? I don't know. I, that's what I've observed. That's what I've experienced. I think your question is well placed. But I guess what it is, is as your vibration increases, your capacity increases to experience and to know and understand. So in 3D, our capacity is less than it is in 5D. All right. As I understand dimensions, it's height, width, and length in three dimensions. What are the classifications within the fifth dimension? I think they're the same because you're experiencing height, width, and depth, but then you're also experiencing an aspect of alignment with the reality that is more aligned than not. You know, it's like the pictures people take where there's orbs. I don't think those orbs have been appearing. I think those orbs have been there all along and that we're just 
growing our capacity to register them. Well, there's a lot of controversy about the orbs, and 95 or 99.9% of them turn out to be dust particles or vapor particles. Well, I don't agree with the percentage. I do agree that there's a lot of, mm. of um, what do you call it, junk out there. Sure. But I don't agree that all of them are. Uh, you know, a classic example is when I was at a wedding and my boyfriend at the time asked me to take a picture of him and his buddies. And I was in a blissed out state and there were a bunch of orbs in the picture. He handed me his phone back. He said, quit fooling around and take a normal picture. And he knew, you know, I was a spiritual person and I, that these kind of things happen. It wasn't his thing. So um, I said, okay, no problem. And I kind of stepped it down and took a picture, and there were no orbs. So, you know, that's just an experience that I had, and I think that other people would have similar experiences. But how much of what we're talking about tonight is based on belief? If you believe it, you believe it. If you don't, you don't. How can you, how can you prove to somebody that what you're saying is real? Well, I think we have to go back to the fact that the scientific method is based upon repeatable events, Mm -hmm. and it's a form of belief just the same as a belief system about orbs or a belief system about the fifth dimension. I have these repeatable experiences, and I can say that they happen over and over, and the scientific method became very narrow in its way of looking at things, and we've become very narrow in our focus on how we observe the reality and evaluate it. But consciousness is capable of so much more. You know, certainly you've had the experience of telepathy where somebody's thinking of you and they call, or vice versa. You're thinking of them, or they're thinking of you and you call. Yes, I have. But I put that down to an an act that science is proving is ESP, extrasensory perception, we all have it. There's nothing woo-woo about it. Um, But it's not provable in the same way that some hard science facts are. And so the point is, the higher dimensional awareness is coming from those of us who have been given the privilege to try to understand it and explain it so other people can understand it as well. But why should only a select few be given this, this uh, ability instead of the masses? Why, this, why the favoritism? Well, I agree. And it's not favoritism. That's why I teach people. And it's not meant to be favoritism. It's just, you know, a few people. It's like, you know, you go into the, in, into the rainforest and you have a guide and he's swashing, you know, with his blade the, the rainforest in front of you. So you have a pass. Everybody after you has a pass, too. Mm-hmm. So it's certainly not special. It's simply that because it hasn't been done before, somebody's got to be the way shower, and it's not anything special at all. And that's exactly what I was trying to explain before about wanting to make sure that whoever works with me and whoever is reading my material or understanding what I'm giving them, that they know that I'm not just talking through my hat, that I've, had, I've taken the time, I've exercised the ability to repeat these things, and to perceive and, and validate it, not only for me, but for other people as well. So if it were just, um, you know, talk, that would be one thing. But I'm not the only person talking about fifth dimension, and I'm not the only person talking about the Akashic Records. So we know that it's not just a Maureen St. Germain thing, you know. No, but we do know that the Akashic Records is not the topic of everyday normal talk that the Akashic Records and what we're talking about this evening is is talked within a certain selective group. So far, yes. But I would like to think that within a few short years, everyone will be willing to accept the possibility that there is something more than just their physical hard reality because they will have experienced something. And, you know, you start asking people, have you had any paranormal experiences in your life? 60, 70% of those people that get asked are, are saying yes. And these are random surveys. You know, even ETs and UFOs, people believe in them, even though our governments are telling us they don't exist. Well, that's because there's no proof. Show me one bit of evidence that UFOs are real. Show me one bit of evidence 
that extraterrestrials are walking along this planet. Show me one bit of proof that the governments of the world are suppressing this alleged information. That's not my area of expertise. But you brought it up. I will tell you, wait a minute, I will tell you that um, plenty of people, The I can't think of his name, um, man who runs Isetti Ranch, has lots and lots of photographs on his website. Who, James Gilliland? <laughs> yes, James Gilliland. He's Thank a you. jerk. Well, I'm sorry I brought him up then. Let's talk about something else. You know, yeah, James uh, Gilliland has has been, you know, it's it's... It's a way of making money for him, mm. you know. So, all well, right, let's let's go. No, let's. Um, I, I, what I know is that I had one experience with okay. an ET. Really, I can only tell you about my one experience. I haven't repeated it. It hasn't occurred more than once. Mm-hmm. But I was in an experience where I'm ninety nine percent sure it was an ET because it looked like an F sixteen, but it was completely silent. And then there was another one right behind it. And that only happens if it's not an F-16, because the, I'm a fan of, of air shows, and so I know that sound, you know, it's pretty specific. How do you know it wasn't an experimental craft? Because the United States government and other governments of the world are, are you know, they are experimenting with what they call silent running afterburns. I don't know the answer to that. I truly don't. Okay. Um, and that's why I said it was just one experiment, one experience. And that was how I concluded that it might have been an ET, because it was completely silent, but it looked like an F-16. And it was close enough for me to to see that it was an, an F-16-shaped vehicle. So, All right. so, you might be right. So it was a UFO experience you had, not an ET experience? Uh, yes, that's okay. true. All right, we'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the x from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Marine St. Germain is our special guest, ExoNation, MarineStGermain.com is her website. And Marine, have you always been interested in the metaphysical, the Akashic Records, uh, and um, what is broadly known as the paranormal? Yes. From the time I was a child, I had a connection to um, inner beings and awareness of things going on around me. And my mother was psychic, and I think my grandmother was. So, um, you know, I'd like to think that it came through the hereditary as well as whatever my intention was when I came into embodiment. What information can you give someone if, when they come to you to get information about the Akashic Records or their Akashic Records? Well, the way I uh, open the records is I literally take their name and their information mm-hmm. in a very sacred ceremony, and then I give them information. We call this opening remarks. And so I'll give them information that there's no way I could possibly know. They've not told me anything. And, you know, opening remarks can be so interesting. Sometimes you get told about a past life. Sometimes you get told about something that's going on in the present. And I'll give you an example. One time in opening remarks, I was shown this woman was in a uh, life jacket and on a boat. And I said to her, 
you know, you don't have to worry about uh, fussing so much with your life jacket. You're going to be fine, and you're not going to ever fall out of your boat. And she said, how did you know we had a boat? And, you know, it, so it goes from there. And it turns out at the end of the reading, she said, you know, I don't really believe in reincarnation, but if I did, how did I die in a past life? Well, you know what the answer was. She drowned. Um, so it can be any kind of information. What we don't do is uh, predictions about death. I don't, I personally don't prefer to do that. Um, and I don't like politics because I think it's dangerous and it gets messy. But we de- generally give people information about their family, their business. I've given lots of business people readings about their um, associates, their board directors, and things like that. Also, people get information about families, the dynamic, you know, why, why is this relationship so funky between myself and my mother or myself mm-hmm. and my husband? That usually is very helpful. We also give information about their life purpose and what they came here to do and things like that. Who is the we you keep referencing? Ah, the Akashic Records guides come in as a group. So they always speak in the plural pronoun, we. And, in fact, that's one of the ways you know that it's the record keeper speaking instead of me, Maureen St. Germain speaking. Um, so they tend to present their information as a conglomerate. And a lot of times when you decide you're going to have a reading, for example, then the things you've been thinking about that you might be asking, they start to assemble, kind of like if you call the library or you go online to the library and ask them to pull these certain reference books, they're going to be ready for you when you get there. And so a lot of times those opening remarks actually answer most of the questions that people had to ask. Very very interesting that way. And it's also very reassuring for me personally, again, because I want to make sure that I'm I'm where I say I am, you know, that I'm actually giving them information that they need that's from their own records. Now do the Akashic do the Akashic records only represent the present and the past or do they represent the future as well? Well, it represents the future in a vantage point of possible futures. So, you know, Edgar Cayce said that the Akashic Records were called the Book of Life, and he was really the one who made it the most popular. And I know you've had Douglas Cottrell on your show, and and he's very popular as well, and we've hosted him at the ARE in New York. And the, the information that we've encountered in the Akashic Records, and I say we because I work with a group of people that um, I have trained, And what I believe we're doing is pulling information that exists around a person. So let's say um, I'm giving a reading for someone, a woman, let's say, who got a divorce. Mm -hmm. But she had children and she felt guilty about the divorce. She regretted having the divorce. Even though she knows her life's better, at the same time, she still feels bad. You know, it's like this conflicting stuff that people go through. And so as long as she has conflict in her mind about did she make the right choice, did she make the best choice, she will fund a version of the reality where she stayed. And I've seen that physically in my in my head, you know, in my third eye, uh, where a person actually did that. And so I know that that's real, that, that even if they are happy that they decided to get the divorce, for example, they've also got another version of the reality where they didn't get the divorce, and they get to see that. And then they, they begin to realize, oh, yeah, that wasn't the greatest choice, and they stop funding it energetically. And this is all going on in the background that you, you know, they don't necessarily know about. And it isn't important unless they're plagued with doubt, and then, you know, then they get, it's mm-hmm. helpful for them to have it. So the records will carry that information as long as it's being funded by the person. All right, but how can the future be foretold in any respect if we all have free will? And Edgar Cayce wasn't correct on everything that he prophesied. Well, of course, and you're absolutely right. Free will enters into all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So generally, we don't do predictions. So you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. But at the same time, you and I could have made a choice and then decided later, no, I don't want to do that. But we had already funded it. You know, we'd already, you know, it's like if you put in money for a college application, you've put some energy into that college application, even if you decide not to go there. And that money's gone. So there's a little bit of energy on it, and that's a possibility, but it isn't very strong. Mm -hmm. So generally, prediction isn't in an Akashic Records reading, unless it's the result of some other kind of question that is leading to that. For example, I gave a a session to a woman who was a regular client as an offhand 
question at the end of her session. She said, by the way, how's it going to work out with my new roommate in this new apartment that I'm getting? And the record keeper said through me, well, it'll be fine until the luster wears off. And she said, luster? What luster? Does that mean it's not going to work out? And they said, no. And she said, well, when will he move out? And the answer was like two months from now. And she said, of what year? You know, because it was a date, not a not what I've just said. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised to get that information to have it flow through me like that. So some events do show up to either be changed or to be observed. Now, in her case, she simply asked the question, well, maybe I shouldn't rent to him. And the answer was, well, in your case, renting to him will lead you to the timeline of the roommate of your choice. So, and she ended up with a roommate that she absolutely adored, and they became best friends. But you wouldn't know that till after the fact. And frankly, if you knew your roommate was going to, you know, uh, crash and burn, not work out, mm-hmm. it'd be easier to put up with that and yet just move on than if you didn't know what's going to happen and you would kept, keep trying to solve it, you know. But once again, this would be based on her Akashic record. But what about the roommates? How do we know the roommates is actually part of hers and that there is an interplay between the two? Well, any time there's an interplay with anyone, then that person is part of your records. And again, you've placed a wonderful question because if you were to ask me about someone you knew that you knew of, but Mm -hmm. they weren't in, in a relationship with you, I wouldn't be able to give you any good information. But if you were to ask me about your beloved or or your relative that you're closely involved with, Mm -hmm. then that information is allowable as far as you're concerned, you see. So it's a limited data set. You're absolutely right. Hmm. So so explain to me how the Akashic records are kept. Are they kept in books? Are they kept in files? Is there an Akashic computer system? How does it work? Well, if you've ever read the book Dune or seen the movie Dune, there were these beings that were called the Travelers. They were these giant beings, but they were living things, and you would get in these beings and travel through interdimensional portals. And I kind of see the record keepers like that. So these are beings that embody the records energetically. I don't believe that they're any kind of a data set like you and I would know as far as you know digital or anything sure. like that. It's more like an energetic imprint. Where do they come from? What's their origin? Well, the story that I know from what I have learned from being in the records is that initially when creation occurred, Mm -hmm. the records didn't exist. And then it was felt that it would be useful to have a record of what had happened. And so then what they did is they created a system that would allow action to produce a record, an instantaneous record. And, you know, for example, let's say you're going to record all your shows for the next five days. You have a pretty strong plan in that, in that regard. And that, that version of the reality is very strong. So that's going to show up in the records as real because what you and I are doing here in 3d, let's say Mm -hmm. is slower or behind the reality And we're part of it like a projection. So it's actually occurred already. We just didn't observe it yet. I know that sounds wacky, but that's exactly what I've seen. And and for example, you know, when we talk about 5D, people who are conscious in 5D are actually seeing stuff before it happens. And it's very noticeable when you're in traffic and you're in a blissed out state, which is, you know, like a 5D state. What is 5D? 5D is what all the traditional religions will tell us is heaven. It's you plugged into God, plugged into who you are. So it's you with all your um, 3D personality stuff, and your heart is so plugged in to your head that's connected to God that only choices that would be God choices would occur to you. So if I offer you the chance to you know, interview somebody that you've not been able to get a hold of, mm-hmm. and this is somebody you really want, the answer isn't, well, I'll see. The answer is, well, when are they available? I'm in. And so that, that version of life, that yes, is what 5D is like. In other words, we're always saying yes to the loving, kind, generous, 
God choice. That's 5D. And so many people are already in 5D, and we don't just go there and stay there. It's more like you're there sometimes and sometimes you're not. So you're sliding in and out of 5D. One of the fastest ways to know that you're in 5D or that you've been in 5D is a simple thing that's been happening to people, and that is you put something down. You walk in your home, you put something down, maybe it's uh, sunglasses or whatever, and you, you might even put it away, and you walk away and you, you know, you forget about it. It went to where it's supposed to be. And then a little bit later, you think, oh, you know what, I'm going to need those sunglasses. I'm going to go back out. So you reach for the sunglasses, and they're not there. And you think to yourself, I just put it there. It's not like I was tired. Nothing wrong with me. I'm perfectly fine. Why aren't they here? You pull everything out of the drawer, not there. Close the drawer. You think, fine, I'll use my spare. You go out, use your spare. You have a wonderful time. You come back, you're blissed out again. You open the drawer, and there's the sunglasses, exactly where you left them. Because when you put something down, when you're in 5D, it's not visible to you when you're in 3D. So when you're in stress or worry mode, you're more like 3D. And when you're in this yummy connection to the divine mode, where you feel safe, where you feel loved, where you feel loving, then that mode makes it easy to uh, find what you left in 5D. And this happened to me over and over and over. And I didn't believe it, Rob. I didn't believe it until it happened with one of my kids. And at 16 years old, my son, who's one of the most grounded ones... Uh, all right, all hold on. Boys, we're we're going to have to have a little bit of a cliffhanger here because I have to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Stand by. Exo Nation, Maureen St. Germain is our special guest this hour, Germain. Dot com, And we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And once again, to all our American listeners, happy Fourth of July weekend. And to all our Canadians around the world and those who would like to be Canadians, happy uh, Canada Day as we celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. This is the X-Zone and we're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Let me ask you a question that I uh, that I'm, I'm I'm having trouble understanding. If somebody has information, and if you're if you're teaching people how to access the Akashic records, and the records of all time are there, and there is the possibility of learning the future through the Akashic records, the different pa- uh, plausible outcomes. Isn't this actually interfering with the time-space continuum and that knowledge that could be retrieved could be used in such a manner that the future wouldn't exist? Yes. And there are people 
uh, beings who have time traveled to try to find this out. There are stories uh, on the internet. I don't have, mm-hmm. it, you know, personal experiences, sure. but I think your point is well taken. There are versions of the reality that are funded energetically. And it is the funding of it. In other words, the more you think about something, the more you are funding that with your energy that then starts to create a groove, let's say, in the records Mm -hmm. that would show up. If you're not funding it, or if you funded it and then you thought, no, that's a really bad idea, and you forget about it, then it's not going to show up because it didn't last. You know, when, when we write a document on our computer, it's really like that. You know, if you close out and you're only a few seconds into it, it probably doesn't save. But anything after that that's got some energy in it, you know, you're going to set saved document. It's going to show up. What do you want to do with this? you want to save it or you want to pitch it? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about what they didn't do. Um Your idea about the future, though, is really valid because everyone does have free will. Everyone does have choice. But you also have preferences. I have preferences. So if you don't like pizza, for example, when you go to a pizza parlor, you're going to have salad or something else. Exactly. And if you agree to go to the pizza parlor, you know already in advance you're not going to have pizza because it doesn't appeal to you. So there are certain things that you could predict, let's say, that aren't going to change because of a person's preferences. And I think that that's a part of the reality that that we don't get or we don't understand. You know, like in the case of the lady whose roommate uh, turned into a monster, he got he apparently had had a problem with drugs early on in his life, and he got hooked in with some other people with drugs, and it was almost like a fait accompli. It was just there in his face and... Before it was over, he got fired from his job and didn't pay his mm-hmm. fair share of the rent, and the rest is history. Sure. So there are tendencies that we have that are going to lead us in a certain direction, and it would take a huge effort of will, a huge act of will, and a, and a different kind of thinking. So unless our thinking changes, mm-hmm. then the records aren't going to change because the records are going to reflect our thinking in the moment as well. All right, but... Let's let's say that some nefarious force has the ability to access the Akashic Records. We know that, based on science, that we live in a binary existence. Zeros and one, negative, positive, up, down, in, out, right, left, black, white, and the list goes on and on and on. So what would happen if a negative force was able to break in or hack the Akashic Records and use all the information there for nefarious uses, nefarious reasons. Would this not destroy time as we know it? If it did, it would destroy them as well. Not necessarily. Because if you're using the dimensional dimensional example, they may not be within the same dimensional confines, and they may be in a totally different dimensional shift that the destruction of the Akashic Records would not affect them. Oh, you're suggesting that they would destroy the Akashic Records? Or use the information that is hacked for nefarious reasons. Well, I don't think that the future is that firm. I think the future is um, very loose and fluid. If if that is the case, how can people go to psychics for psychic readings and future readings? Well, they're reading a person's energetic field and they're reading their tendencies and their likelihoods. And I honestly don't know because Mm -hmm. I don't do the psychic thing. So I'm not sure what they're accessing or how they're accessing it. Uh, what I know from the Akashic Records is that your information is about your soul's growth, and the information is made available for soul growth only. So even with the idea that you would have a nefarious 
agenda, you, you probably wouldn't be able to access it. It wouldn't be possible to hack it. It would be like a fail-safe because it's only for soul growth. It's not to be able to use it for prediction. I mean, that's the first thing we tell people. This is not a psychic reading. So what information do you give people who come to you for Akashic Record readings? Uh, we give them information that they probably already knew. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, the business partner that they're thinking about hooking up with, but they have a, you know, they're not sure about, we might be able to tell them that this person is unethical and is, is not to be trusted. Or if you're picking out a group of board members, you might be able to say, well, this wouldn't be ideal as a treasurer, this wouldn't be the ideal as a marketing person, but he's not so good at um, another piece of it. And so you're able to tell information about things and the nature, and they tell the reason why. So, for example, you a lot of people are dealing with their hurts or their wounds. So why did my brother do this? Why did my mother do this? Why, um, why did such and such happen? And so they're looking to find the answer on the why question. And in the back of their mind, they kind of know it anyway. You know, it's kind of like a woman who has had her spouse cheat on her almost always knows. Even when she doesn't know how she knows, she suspects, she, she feels it. Mm-hmm. How does she know this? Who knows? But the answer is, in the records, it's already there. So energetically, it's there for her soul growth in that moment. So when she goes to an Akashic Records guide, and she said, is my husband cheating? W- one time I got asked a question by a client. She said, did my daughter's boyfriend kill the cat? And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't want to answer that question. That's a horrible question. And the record keeper said through me, you do not need the record keepers to confirm that which you already know. So I don't know. I do believe that the records are there for soul growth. And if the answer is going to give you soul growth, then you'll get the answer. And if it isn't, you don't get an answer. You just get the runaround. Um It's a very interesting thing because it helps people make decisions. It helps people because a lot of times people say, you know, I I already knew that. Sometimes when I have to give people really Mm -hmm. bad news about something, I'll say, you know, I'm really uncomfortable delivering this information. You know, a lady asked me recently about her brother and the record keeper said, you know, he's got, he's got the youngest child syndrome. You know, he's expecting everyone else to help him. And, um, I'm, I said to her, I'm really uncomfortable delivering this to you. And she said, it's okay. I, I, I have a good idea what you're going to tell me. And, of course, it confirmed what she knew. So I'm not telling her anything she didn't know. All I'm doing is saying it from another vantage point, and it gets to be confirmed in her own mind. Because many people do have the ability to tell what's going on, and everyone is getting more of that, more and more of that every day. We're able to feel and sense what's going on around us easier today than we were 20 years ago. Well, let me ask you this. What happens if somebody asks you a question, you give them an answer, and you're wrong? I don't know. Like the example you gave about the member of the board of directors. What happens if the information you gave is wrong, and instead of causing something good in this man's life, you've done something that is negative to the to to well, this person's life. Um I think your question is well placed, but honestly, mm-hmm. everyone who t- who takes the time to have an Akashic Records reading knows it's a resource. It's like looking something up in the library. And not all books, for example, are based on hard line facts, and it is possible, I suppose, that that information could be wrong. But I don't think it would ruin the person's life because if it's that wrong, you know, like really wrong and it's a bad choice, mm-hmm. the person's going to overrule what they heard in the records and make a decision on what they know. They're not going to follow my advice over their own. Then, in, then, then my next logical question is why did they go to you in the first place then? Because in all cases that I know of, the information they get in the records gives them guidance to make better decisions so that they can support their soul's growth. But their soul's growth. But when you give advice based on your interpretation of what you believe to be the Akashic Records that affects someone else's soul, 
Isn't that a double standard? No, because number one, it's not my interpretation. I'm a channel in that moment. I'm not saying something that I think might be true. I'm saying something that's coming through me, and I am not even running it through my mind. And I'll give you a quick example. There was a situation where... We've got, we've got, about, logged, we've got about 15 seconds, so I'm sorry. We, we've got to say so long for tonight. ExoNation Marine... Um, Maureen St. Germain is the name of the lady. Her website is maureensaintgermain.com. And Exo Nation, you be the judge. I don't know. Once again, this, this topic is one of belief. If you believe it, it's real. But I don't know. It looked like a piece of Swiss cheese to me because there were a lot of holes in it. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. Don't go away. 